Okay, let go to the cloud. Okay, uh, greetings everyone and welcome. Welcome to Morgan State University Research and Scholarship Webinar Series. Uh, this series is organized by the School of Education and Urban Studies in collaboration with Academic Affairs and the Star Scholars Network. Today is the first day of Black History Month in, in the United States. Black History Month honors the contribution and sacrifices of African Americans who helped save the nation. This tradition started 96 years ago by Carter Wilson in 1926. So I played the jazz music in the background earlier. Um, meanwhile, uh, maybe you can continue using the chat room for your introduction. I know I have invited many colleagues outside the US, uh, despite the different time zone, and thank you. You can share your affiliation, discipline, contact information if you wish, um, you know, to strengthen your professional network. In this virtual series, uh, we host panel discussion on various uh, topics related to educational pedagogies, innovat innovative technologies, uh, some international initiatives, and also uh, research and collaboration, of course. Um, there are at least two sessions scheduled every month for the both faculty and students, and feel free to uh, join anytime. Um, you will be uh, receiving those uh, from me. Uh, my name is Krishna Bista, Professor of Higher Education in the Department of Advanced Studies, Leadership and Policy uh, at Morgan State University, also the founding editor of Journal of International Student. In a few minutes, you will hear from our panelists and the guests about their experiences of publishing books and also working on editorial board of a, a number of journals. Uh, they will share upcoming opportunities and the tips per publication. Um, it's a speaker will take about three to five minutes uh, to present their opening remarks or publication experiences, and they will answer your question and invite you to participate uh, in group discussion. So uh, that, that's this very simple outline. And also today or yesterday, just the you know, Chinese New Year began. So happy new year. This year is for bravery, confidence and strong will for our research, publication, any collaboration. Um, so um, we have roughly 70 minutes ahead of us. It, you know, we may finish a little bit earlier. Uh, in the room, I see definitely many familiar faces, expert in the field whom I had an opportunity to work uh, together over the years. Uh, so the using the chat room, I invite you to share, um, you know, maybe some of your tips and experience of uh, academic publications, maybe the books or journals, um, and definitely we will, uh, you know, invite you uh, later on in, our, in about 30 minutes in group discussion. Um, before I invite our uh, speaker, here is the bigger question of the day uh, for all of us. Um, so I, I wanted to update you, uh, you uh, about some of our current program and the resources um, that, you know, may be uh, interesting. So Dr. Chris Glass, and uh, Chris Glass is at Boston uh, College. Uh, he and I have heavy responsibility in running journals and the book series. Uh, in the last three years, we work on 33 book projects. That's quite a lot. We did not take all of them. We selected few and eight professional journals in our open journals in education platform. So I will be talking those in a minute. So th this is a list of our journals and, pub uh, and publishing partner, including uh, Routledge, uh, Springer, Palgrave, Macmillan, and the University Press. And also these are the uh, some professional journals. All of them are open access, meaning free to publish, free to access, and free to read um, for all um, forever. So some journal publish two issues per year, uh, whereas the other journal publish at least six issues annually. Um, you know, we publish original article, even in other languages. Uh, so here you can see some of those that we publish in Chinese, Baza Indonesia and Spanish, and some of them are upcoming edition. You will hear other languages as well. These are original articles and entire volume include those on the top of regular issues. And um, all books in our series are published in collaboration with Journal of International Student 
Open Journals in Education and Star Scholars Network. Um, any books that we have published in the past uh, 32 months. Um, so like these journals, every chapter in our book project, you know, uh, went through a standard peer review process. Uh, all the reviewers um, and their names are printed in both print and digital uh, edition of these books. On average, I would say it took two uh, or 2.5 years for the publication process from public uh, proposals to reviewing, you know, chapters and proofreading and receiving the hard copy. Um, I was definitely fortunate to collaborate with uh, many emerging uh, scholars as well as expert, including Roy Chen from Indiana University. Now he's at Lee University. Uh, Ryan Ellen from Chapman University. Peggy Jason or Chris Glass, Susan Cromers. She was a doctoral student when I invited her to the project. Uh, Celine, uh, Greg Malvo, Tony Pinders, uh, Ravi Amigan. Lingu, just make, you know, these are some of the names. Um, and here are also the uh, books that, you know, um, I was so fortunate to work with them uh, on a wide range of topics um, and so important to uh, us and for many of us who worked over the pandemics um, and also published these books. Um, and yes, you know, they, they covered the student mobility, international faculty members, online teaching and learning. And these topics, uh, we're selected based on our personal and professional experiences. Um, so I strongly believe in the power of collaboration and I invited all of you for the collaboration and to talk more about the research articles, the book projects. And these are the latest uh, edition coming out. Uh, the HBCU International Component is coming out this week. Uh, this is the first cover image I received uh, last week. So here is the STAR, uh, STAR Scholar. Network, um, you know, includes um, roughly seventeen thousand professors and doctoral students from one hundred twelve countries, um, and they have been also serving on some of our journals. Uh, we usually partner with the local universities if there is a need uh, for research and publication. Um, this is our work volume. It's crazy, right? So don't get surprised. Um, yes, this is currently overload. Uh, we have more than four, uh, I would say 5,000, you know, manuscript annually uh, in our books and journals um, and, you know, uh, individual like you who serve on the review board and this, you know, cycle gets changed every two years. So you are more than welcome to be the part of the team. Um, then also we need, uh, you know, editors as well as other contributors to support. All editors, author, and reviewers do not get paid. It's purely love of labor. And, you know, I've been doing this for almost 11 years. Um, at least, you know, we are able to reach out many scholars in the global south. And that's the beauty and the joy of working it. Um, also, we do have other projects, you know, some of them here. Um, we have an annual global essay contest. And you can share this call for uh, you know, essays um, with your faculty or students, um, always October 30th is the deadline. Uh, we accept essays in eight different languages. Um, I will share the link or the information in, in a minute uh, via chat and as well as the email. Um, here are some of our uh, a few, you know, institutions who sponsor and support the global essay contest. Um, we announce those on the occasion of International Education Week. Um, also, we have the Millennium Scholar Program. Um, Chris Glass is the lead on this, uh, and the Lisa from uh, Miami University, another great uh, mentor mentee opportunity. And this is completely free if you are recommended by the dean or the department chair of your institutions. Okay, um, then, um, yes, these are again, I said, open access opportunity for you. Um, I guess it's time to begin the program um, from a short remarks from Professor Frim Ampa, says my chair in the Department of Advanced Studies, Leadership and Policy at Morgan State University. She has published numerous articles and book chapters and served on uh, editorial board of many journals uh, in higher education. Um, she also published recently one article in the GIS. Um, Dr. Ampo, uh, over to you for brief remarks. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. We are really pleased to have such a diverse group of people from all over joining us today. 
um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge um, some of the uh, the the shortfalls and the problems we are experiencing as a nation, and especially towards our HBCU HBCUs of uh, Morgan State. Today, Morgan State served remotely because we could not come on campus due to a bomb threat, and we are hoping that these situations will be resolved soon because we have over. 20 HBCUs whose uh, current academic uh, lives are being put on hold and put into um, despair because of all of these bomb threats. And so I want to acknowledge that and really hope for resolution for this. So. But at Morgan State, we have been uh, denoted as a preeminent urban university, and it was one of the reasons I really accepted this job. So I started as department chair just this January, and I've only been on the job for three weeks. But I, I really wanted to join this institution because of what this department and this institution does and the ways in which it serves its people. And one of the ways in which I admire Morgan State is by maintaining that focus on the students we care about but still pushing for that higher level of research and still pushing to become the preeminent voice in, uh, in urban education and the preeminent voice in um, black issues um, at, at the, at, at the, in the country. So, and we at the Department of Advanced Studies and Leadership and Policy, we strive to maintain that mission. We are the number one doctoral producing uh, department in at Morgan State and we we hold that firm and dear and I am very grateful to Dr. Bista for taking on this project and for pushing for uh, these webinar series to help push our research and our teaching and our scholarship in different ways and so I'm really thank you so much Dr. Bista for taking on this extra service but then helping to build that research culture and that teaching culture and that sharing culture at, at within the department, within the school, and at Morgan. So publishing, that was one, that's one of the, what we call hidden curriculum things, right? It's, it's something that if you, if you find a great mentor, they're going to tell you about. If you don't, you don't really know. It's a really a hidden curriculum idea. And so I'm really glad we are going to be discussing that and what it takes to look at it from a general perspective and from a book perspective. And so, I'm really looking forward to this discussion and I feel like I have been in the field for over 14, 15 years now. I'm currently serving as an associate editor, but I believe I'm going to learn a lot more, especially because I've never really done a book. I've always been very interested in journal articles. So I am really looking forward to the book sessions and to hear from people who specialize in writing books. So thank you all and I'm looking forward to a great discussion. Thank you, um, and Dr. Ompo, I, I truly appreciate that. Um, I hope you can see my screen, right? No? Yep, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Um, so we continue, uh, these are the, some of our programs. We have nine graduate programs in our, um, so Dr. Ompo is busy, you know, leading those nine graduate programs in the department. We don't have undergraduate. That means we have to do more research and publication and more talk with many of, uh, you know, scholars around the globe. And in, in the room, I see covering at least 10 countries, even in a, you know, in a, people, a group of 30 people. So going back to our first discussion board, uh, you know, I put the question in the chat. Um, so we'll take uh, about 30 minutes or 20 minutes probably here. Um, to begin with uh, the first panel, and I invited the editor of the uh, journals that listed here, some of them could not make this evening. So we have editor Josh Kunath from, you know, Journal of School Administration, Research and Development. This journal is housed at the California State University. And also we have a pleasure of Dr. Emani Shala, the founding editor of the Journal of Interdisciplinary Studies in Education from Arkansas State University. Um, uh, we could not have Dr. Josh Lynch from Journal of Trauma Studies. This is from Appalachian State University. And of course, Dr. Ampa, uh, who represent uh, research in higher education journal. Um, so here, what we do is I like uh, to 
I'd like to ask each of you, uh, the editors to talk briefly about their journal and share, you know, one or two tips or even more, um, you know, or direction for those uh, student or faculty who are interested in serving on your editorial board. Uh, maybe we can go first with Dr. Emeni Shala, the founding editor of the Journal of Interdisciplinary Studies, then maybe, um, you know, Dr. Frame um, and other uh, members here. Thank you, Chris. Um, the Journal of Interne Interdisciplinary Studies in Education is a 10 year old. This, this year will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the journal. Uh, Chris helped me with the start at, at the beginning. And uh, we aim to uh, publish research, uh, empirical research, mostly on the interdisciplinary uh, practices and uh, research uh, conducted in uh, higher education as well as uh, public uh, schools. We publish two, uh, two issues uh, a year and we publish a special issue in the summer that usually is a themed issue in which we invite guest editors to, uh, to edit that special issue. One of the things we always looking for, we average about 50, uh, 50 articles that we receive for each issue. We publish about nine or 10 of them in, in each issue. We, have, we are peer reviewed, we are uh, free to submit and uh, publish your articles in, uh, in our journal. It is double blind peer review and we're looking for always quality uh, research to publish. Uh, we also looking for uh, editors, reviewers, and authors uh, to help collaborate on uh, in our journal. One of the things, or kind of like the things that I advise young scholars to collaborate on your research, write with uh, others, uh, collaborate with uh, experienced writers at the beginning. That will help you publish more. Also pay attention to your writing and get people to help you edit your manuscripts. One of the most common uh, issues we deal with is uh, having uh, good, good research, but uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes it, it requires a lot of work to edit. And uh, so, it, it would be nice if young scholars and, and people who want to be published to uh, get some help with editing their manuscripts before they submit to the journal. Um, I don't know what else to cover, Chris. Thank you, Dr. Sala. Okay, Dr. Ampa. All right, so, um... I am an associate editor for the journal, our journal is named Research in Higher Ed. And um, so Research in Higher Ed is unique in the, in the field of higher ed. So we have about top four top journals within the field of higher ed and Research in Higher Ed is one of them. And, but because of the ways in which we, we were started, we were, established, we were established from the Association for Institutional Research. And so it was, very focused on quantitative analysis and high level methodology and so uh, we tend to we tend to um within the field we tend to actually publish um, when you read our journal notes we published advanced work that is based off of advanced quantitative uh, analysis and so that has sort of pigeonholed us a little bit into <laughs> we are the journal for the quantitative methods but not necessarily. Our journal is more focused on policy, and so we accept all publications that are directed towards higher education policy. And so that's how that's the main 
way we differentiate ourselves. But unfortunately, because of the nature of higher ed policy, it has been stereotyped into a quantitative way. And so we are really open to um, higher educational articles that focus on policy regardless of methodology. And so, and so that is the niche. We really want ideas that focus on pushing where higher ed policy goes to. So our journal has an editorial board and uh, the requirements for our editorial board, it, you have to be invited to join the editorial board. And we only unfortunately accept people who have been published in the journal to become members of the editorial board. But what we do have is an ad hoc reviewer process, which we invite people to become ad hoc, ad hoc reviewers because we believe that ad hoc review, we are able to mentor ad hoc reviewers to become, uh, to publish in the journal. Because as you become, as you're an ad hoc reviewer and you see what is coming in the field, especially for new professionals, being open and exposed to the new articles and the new ideas in the field serves as a mentoring process. And so as an editorial board and as an um, editor, editor team, we are, we are very um, set on inviting people to become ad hoc reviewers and helping mentor them with the goal of helping them become authors within the journal, which would then push them into actually becoming the editorial board member. And so that's what, that's the goal of the journal. And that's how we use our ad hoc reviewers. And so I invite you all, if you're interested to talk to me about becoming a part of our ad hoc reviewer team. And I will be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, Dr. Ampo. Um, Maybe we can take one or two questions here. Um, and I, I have also invited Dr. Jasper Kaur from Latrobe University in Australia. She's here in the, uh, in, um, in the room. So if you want to chime in anything, that's great. Uh, Dr. Salah's journal is open access. There is no fees, anything. And Dr. Ampa's journal is also uh, free for the authors. However, you know, there is institutional fees. If you want to publish open access, uh, Dr. Ampa's journal cost. 1990 euros per article if if we accumulate if we had charts that cost over our open journal system probably would have a billion dollar by now so that's the one beauty of keeping open access and uh, the good news is we became number 10 ranked 10 among all higher education journals uh the journal of international student and i so appreciate dr ryan ellen um, and, and many other colleagues here, um, Dr. Ray Chen, you know, for leading the initiative, and of course, you know, Boston College and Dr. Glass, and even many of my colleagues here at the Morgan to have that rank secured. Uh, the, the magic was just open access, giving a free access for anyone, anywhere. Um, although it cost a lot of money and time for any journals to run these professional uh, you know, level and to maintain that rigor and quality integrity of the publications. Um, but again, you know, we have lots of opportunity for there. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kaur, uh, do you want to chime in or Dr. Ellen or Dr. Uh, Chen uh, or any, any, anyone in the room? Everyone is a speaker here and you are invited I'll just chime in to, to talk, just to advocate for open access. You know, we, we see that, um, and, and we're sort of stuck in a system, right, where the faculty, administrators, we're doing the, the work, the, the researchers, we're doing the work, and sort of a lot of the money gets funneled into these big publishers making, you know, it's really a billion dollar industry. Um, and, you know, the open access movement is a great idea. We're taking things out of the ivory tower and moving it into where everyone can have access. I'm sure we've all tried to find an article for some sort of literature review or something, and we go to the journal website page, suddenly we don't have access to it. We don't have institutional access. Uh, it's great to remove that, and anybody can go and read them, but they place the burden now with this gold open access movement, uh, which is what it's called, onto the, uh, the individual author, the individual researcher. And that does create more divides, I think, in um, in our sector, in our field, in, in global science, and who can publish in journals. For instance, I saw recently Nature announced uh, a, a, 
um, open access fee that you have to pay um, if you're going to publish in one of their journals. And the cost is $11,000. $11,000. I think that's just unacceptable um, in, you know, to create inequalities throughout the world, really. Um, so the Journal of, of International Students and sort of a lot of the journals that are trying to practice open access, uh, I will wor always work for them. I, I just, I'll always review for them. I'm really grateful of the things they're doing in the field. And um, it, I'm just, thank you, Dr. Bista, for starting that. Thank you, everyone else, for, for working on the, them because I think they're really important and a model for a lot of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellen, appreciated. When we talk the open access, also we should be mindful of the predatory journals. There are several commercial journals, you know, they say open access, fast review process, and also they brag about their ranking, scoopers listing, and many other things. So as a scholar, as a critical consumer of education, we should be very mindful of where these journalists start, their practice, their, you know, take a look at the editorial board and also look into the sample, uh, you know, the uh, articles they published. So having these, you know, information ahead of you would be really helpful. I know many of you who are emerging scholar, you know, those who are in a career ladders, you know, there may be, you know, more complications later on, particularly the tenure committee, your doctoral graduation requirement committee, they might, you know, take a look. Sometimes the senior professional can smell you know, the article that you, you publish from before you start bragging of your uh, achievement. So there are also critical things to definitely take into consideration. Uh, so the best person for you is always your mentors, colleagues who have been in the field run by them, you know, rather than, you know, being in a hurry. Uh, and that's hurriness is, is particularly the questionable in the global South. In the room, I see many colleagues, you know, from Nepal, Kazakhstan, uh, Kenya, other part, you know, you have a pressure from your dean, provost, presidents to publish on top tier journal or Scopus listed journal. And in the name of Scopus, I know you have been already victim of the publication, you know, cycle. Um, okay, great. Um, we take uh, other comment or question. Uh, we are quiet here, so no question, no comment, anything? Maybe Dr. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Professor Bista. Uh, this is Chandra Upadhyay from Tuvo University in Nepal. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm not visualized, but I can speak just uh, here uh, with my video off. Uh, thank you, in fact. I would like to thank the organizing committee, and it's, been, it's an opportunity for me to be connected with you all. Uh, yeah, uh, as you just mentioned before, sometimes we are lost uh, how to proceed ahead. And we are in big confusion uh, where to go and which journal to choose actually, because in my place too, so many offers, so many emails, a lot of things come. And from different parts of the world, uh, requesting for articles, requesting for being editors, reviewers, and so on. At uh, this opportunity, I think really connects me uh, to the right platform. And I would love to be connected and learn more and to share what I have learned with my colleagues here. Thank you, thank you indeed. Um, and as a student of, student of sociology, uh, if you get any scope for me to be connected, uh, first of all, I want to learn. That means I want to contribute my papers uh, so that I can be in the loop. And once I'm done with some publication through your organization, through your team report, then I'll be working further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you also for representing one of the mega university. Tribune University, the number ninth, the largest university on the planet. Thank you, uh, Professor Upadhyaya. Um, any other comment, suggestion, tips you want to share with us? This is your opportunity. You are the speaker. You can simply just turn on the microphone, you know, and the chime in.
Uh, Dr. Bista, this is Kesa Bhattarai speaking from University of Central Missouri. And uh, can I speak? Welcome, yes, sir. Okay, my question is, I have not, I was on and off while you were talking then because of some issue here. Uh, so if I have not uh, heard everything what you have said and uh, asking questions that is irrelevant or that was already explained, please forgive me. Uh, my question is, uh, how could I contribute as an editor or, or reviewer? Because I have not published anything on your area and my area is geography. And of course, I love uh, to join this um, stream and uh, renowned scholar. I saw that uh, there are scholars from all geographic areas around the world. So it is. It will be a very uh, encouraging platform for me to get Thank acquainted, you. to get acquainted uh, with these scholars from all over the world and uh, to know about the world. And so, could you please suggest me how could I contribute uh, or first thing I need to publish, or I can contribute without uh, publication in reviewing or uh, in editing or something like this? Thank you. Of course, thank you. Uh, Professor Sala, you want to chime in or Dr. Ampa? Uh, okay. I can hear you. I, I, I can start. I think, uh -huh. I think um, one of the things I always encourage people who have never, who haven't really published within it is there, 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 there is so, and um, this is used, this is usually coming at new students. But there is something that you are interested in, and one of the very interesting and somewhat easier ways to get published is to do is to publish a literature review and do take a look at what is currently in the field and if anybody hasn't done an analysis a good uh, literature review analysis of it i think that 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 is always one good step of trying to get into publishing and getting into uh becoming uh, known and 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 a, and a good literature review opens you up for more ideas and so my my encouragement and we have a lot of different journals and my journal i know that's that is um, if you have a good literature review, especially with I mean, research in higher ed, if you have a literature review that is targeted at looking at a policy issue, we will take a look at it and publish it. And so, and with a literature review, you are not necessarily uh, trying to collect data and doing the analysis. It's, it's, it's one of the good first steps of getting within a field and publishing within a field. So my, may I ask you the supplementary question? Um, Dr. Uh, Professor Bert Rai, um, let me tell you this, and then we can take your follow-up question and also you know, Dr. Sala will chime in. Um, the first thing is we have a wide range of journal, more interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary. So geography is probably one of the best one. You may not believe, you know, I ran the student mobility series, the global student mobility series, which is a part of the geography, the mobility. Um, and then we look into multiple aspects of the mobility of the faculty and the students. So in the chat, I put the link ojed.org. You can select all the link, no matter whichever journal you select. In if you are going on this open access platform, I rec recommend strongly rec recommend and encourage both reviewers and editors to be familiar with the aims and scope of the journals that you are interested in. And also you are required to update your profile, create a an username, password, insert your area of expertise, you know, so that you are likely to get the manuscript that align with your deep interest. Uh, as a reviewers, you are required to give specific comments and suggestions for each major, you know, section of the articles, you know, it could be introduction or lit review or method results. And in order to be the you know, OJED reviewers, you are also required to complete a training. We have a 60 minute trainings. Once you finish the training, you get a certificates and you are invited. Um, you can be the readers, you know. Uh, so one of the goal we strongly you know, uh, encourage all of you is to provide 
meaningful comments to any manuscript that you read because we want to feel proud that at least we provide uh, quality comments even though we reject their manuscript so that you know the author can take those comments and uh, work on their manuscript that's what we strongly believe in uh, you know um, so the other thing is um, you know in in my discipline or all OJE ed journals follow apa publication guidelines american psychological association seventh edition we encourage our reviewers to be familiar at least some part of the apa manuals usually every single uh, reviewers is supposed to get somewhere from six to ten manuscript per year so 10 manuscript you know um, i don't know how how long it takes depending on how fast you read and you know the element of the manuscript you look into also reviewers and editors both group of you know the scholar are expected to attend two virtual meetings that's the two years commitment two meetings virtually so both editors and the reviewer discuss some of the you know changes the practices um, the, if you are coming to the agent ed editors, editor will make independent evaluation of the manuscript. Editor will send out manuscript to the reviewers if they are okay, make decision and uh, decision on the assigned article by the editor in chief or the senior editors. So uh, as, as I said earlier, we have you know several openings for the reviewers. Uh, mainly also we are looking for the copy editors um, that could be from English department as well if you are interested and of course editors um, so you can indicate your interest even here in the chat or you can email one of the editors here in the room um, and then Professor Bartwright we can take your follow-up questions and anything's there Dr. Sala will chime in or anybody from the room Okay, thank you very much. So my recent publication was from the Springer. I have posted the link there. Thank you. And so this is this is the latest book, and I published uh, three books: one with the Scarecrow Publications, and uh, one with the Barlack uh, Springer, and the other one is uh, uh, the uh, Springer Nature. So these mm -hmm. are the books uh, besides my journal articles. So that's very impressive. Congratulations, uh, Professor Butterai. Actually, oh, you, thank you. Hmm. help us to go to the next segment of our program. If there are no any questions or we'll take all the questions again, we do have another three minutes or so discussion. So if you can see on my screen, um, the second segment is about the book discussion, uh, book publication journey and the tips for the new author or editors or even for the chapter authors. So I have invited here uh, Dr. Ravi Amigan, uh, Dr. Jaising, Dr. Malbu, Dr. Ellen, Dr. Kaur. All of them have published book. And these are the, some of the titles that you can see on the screen. Um, so in this uh, you know, um, session, I mean this segment, we'll take a few minutes um, to talk about each other's book. And also they will share their publication experience and probably Dr. Bartrai also can chime in your experience working with a Springer. Um, so here on my screen first is the Dr. Peggy Gessing, uh, assistant professor from Eastern Virginia Medical School. Um, you know, she's very active researches from her graduate school from Old Dominion School uh, University. And this big uh, important volume came just, uh, I would say a few months ago. Uh, and she worked with Dr. Glass. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Peggy, would you like to chime in a couple of minutes before I invite the next uh, editor? Sure, thanks Krishna for inviting me. Um, yeah, so I worked with T Dr. Chris Glass on this book and I was invited to be a co-editor of this book. And editing a book was something I had no experience with. I had done a lot of journal article reviews um, and done a lot of reviews at conferences and things like that, but doing a book at it was just a whole new experience. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I learned through the process was just the importance of opening up and sending out a call for proposals for, for um, chapters for the book, but also having an idea in mind of some authors that you would like to invite to, to write in your book, to include a chapter in the book. And so that was really crucial for us as we gathered the chapters. Um, 
And then where things became a little different was that we also not only had to collect all these chapters together, but we had to get approval from the um, publisher. So we had to write a whole proposal for the publisher about what the book would be about, what the contents were, why this is a relevant topic and why it's important. Um, but when it all came together, it's, it's a really great book because the authors are from, you know, around the globe. So we had all kinds of international authors contribute articles uh, all on social, or um, I'm sorry, global mobility and study abroad and talking about um, global mobility from, you know, various perspectives beyond what we normally see in publications, which is that U.S. study abroad perspective. So it was great to have that broad perspective. Um, my background is in career development and career outcomes. So there were a, lot, a couple of chapters in the book that talked about the outcomes of how study abroad impacts uh, the students that study abroad, how that impacts them economically, how it impacts their social mobility. So um, it was a really great opportunity. And some of the, the things that people have said before about publishing also go toward uh, you know, how to get involved in a book like this. And I know a couple people mentioned making sure you have a writing mentor, a writing partner, or talk with a mentor. And definitely, you know, anytime you can volunteer to be an article reviewer, um, it just helps you to understand the writing process and to kind of get, it gets you into the group and gets you in with other colleagues. And that's how opportunities to publish articles and books pop up. Thank you, Peggy. Appreciated that insight and very helpful. Um, let's take a couple of more experiences of the editors. Um, I'm so fortunate to have uh, both, you know, Dr. Ryan Ellen and then Dr. Wei Chen in the room. But I invite Dr. Roy, uh, Ryan Ellen to share his experience of publishing this book. This is a very fascinating book. You know, it took almost two and a half years for us. Um, I'm also one of the co-editors, but we, we, we hear from Dr. Ellen. Ryan, over to you. Sure, thank you. And uh, thanks, Roy. Hopefully he, he can uh, give some words too because he was the lead editor on this book. But, you know, I, I did have a wonderful experience on this. I previously uh, published another book through a small publisher. Um, and that was a much different experience because we sort of took, for the smaller publisher, we sort of took people that were already related to this conference we were doing on this uh, Chinese historical figure. And it was just a, a very small team. The, the editor didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Um, and I'm proud of the book from the small publisher, but to be honest, no one's reading this, no one's buying this, no one's heard of this book. And uh, it, it's barely online, it's not even indexed in uh, on Google, you know, and that's tough. But this book has been out for, you know, six months or whatever it is, and we can see people are looking at it, people are reading it, people are already uh, citing our work. Uh, it, it's an exciting work too. And people are critiquing it. They're saying, how can you write a book about COVID? COVID still happening. That's, so, that's fine. That's part of the, that's part of social science. We're supposed to get critiqued and we're supposed to, to push back on, on those types of things. Um, but, but it does create an exciting environment. We got to work with scholars uh, across the world to see what they were doing and how they were uh, able to either overcome or engage with COVID. There, it's much different experiences from the United States to, to China to uh, places uh, across Africa and South America even. And uh, for me, I think one of the great experiences I was working with Dr. Bista, I was working with Dr. Chan, who had experience kind of doing this process, uh, the, the, the way that they sort of set this up. You know, again, I had a, a little bit of experience with the previous book, but I didn't have their, uh, I think, uh, I guess, uh, sort of method of going about it. And so learning a lot from them knowing that, okay, in the future, now I know how to operate this. Now I can sort of do this where we, where it's not just a small group of scholars, I can reach scholars across the world to share in the experience of creating this book and really getting uh, exciting uh, chapters. And, and I'll say it before, uh, I think you heard me kind of ranting against the big publishers. And I'm not saying that uh, they don't offer anything because in fact, the publishers that we work with were lovely people. They were very nice and they helped us and they edited the book and they went through it and they found issues and problems. And so I was, you know, I, I really liked working with them and uh, no problems at all. 
um, on that regard, I, you know, I, I don't think it's sort of, you know, working out of greed. They, they did help in the scientific process. And so uh, th this can be something that uh, even if you're going through the big publishers and, and things like that, um, that, that's perfectly fine. And I understand that some people have evaluation metrics that their institution look at, look at. So if you just do an open access book that anybody can get to and you just publish it on your own, maybe that doesn't count for your evaluation. We have to understand we live in, we're not gonna probably change the space. Um, so we have to play the game that we're sort of all in together. Um, so uh, that's just my two cents. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, hopefully I'll have some more projects um, in the future. I, I just a note, I added a link in the, in the chat earlier about uh, op, um, student run journals. And so I'm just sort of compiling those together, grad student run journals. If you have any, throw them on there and uh, we can just have a little list of those. So thank you. Great, great. Um, and Dr. Um, Roy Chen, if you want to chime in, that's okay. I know you said something last uh, session as well. Um, and now it's the time to go outside the US. So let's go all the way to Australia and let's hear the some of the her publication experience from Dr. Josh Ricoeur. She's from La Trobe University, Australia. She recently published a book from a different publishing house and let's hear her experience and tell us a little bit about the book. Over to you, Dr. Kaur. Thank you, Doctor. The, um, this is actually the second book. The first book that I was working was uh, with Dr. Krishna Bista. And I am like Peggy, um, no experiences in uh, publishing books. But I reached out to Dr. Krishna, and actually he's the one who helped me out with the first book. Uh, we, we are taking it too long, three years already. I'm supposed to be out by this year, I hope, at the end of the year. And um, experiences has been great. And I would always encourage, I'm an early career researcher, and I would always encourage others to reach out. Because we are early career researchers, we have got no network yet. And being an international academic, I'm a Malaysian, um, uh, now in Australia, unfortunately got married here, so now have to stay here. And, and you have to find your people or your network. Um, and Dr. Krishna Bista is a way, way, very far from me, but, you know, because our interests um, intersect, uh, looking into international students' issues, international students' um, challenges and that's where we connected and from that book uh, that uh, roll over to the to the book that uh, Dr. Krishna Bista showed just now and that's that the book came out by reaching out as well I was reading uh, one of the editors Siri editors book on academic promotion and I just reached out to her and saying that this is a very great book for early career researcher to gain promotion as an international academic and I was talking about international academic experiences and so on and so forth. I said, why don't you write a book on that? And she said, why don't you write the book on that? Huh? I'm like, okay, I can take up the challenge, but I really need help. And she helped me out. And then the book is going to be out in two months time. And Dr. Krishna, same similar to Dr. Krishna, I, another book is coming out this year as well by Springer. That is also by reaching out as well. So I, I have no mentor. I had no mentor, I still don't have mentor, but I have friends who will help me out when I need their help. And I think that's, that's very, very important as early career researchers. And that's what I would uh, advocate. Um, over to you, Dr. Krishna, do you want to, me to say thank something? Thank you, else? thank you, thank you. You covered <laughs> a lot. Um, yes, the other book, you know, we collaborate with um, Dr. Rosalind Ravi, yeah. another pioneer of international education from California State University, University in Northridge. And the book is on international student and employability from the global south and the super powerful. Um, there are a couple of other titles also coming out. And also congratulations to Dr. Kaur for the recent award for her publication and promotion at her institution. So we are very proud of you. Um, on the screen, I have still a couple of. Uh, Dr. Greg Malbo is a graduate of Morgan University. He's a professor of English. He could not make tonight. 
um, you know, I am uh, also faculty in a community college leadership program. So for a long time, I was thinking, what would be international student and their experiences at American community colleges? We have 1600 community colleges. So that was a long time, you know, overdue my, you know, project. And I was so fortunate to work with Greg and this book also came out earlier last year. Um, then we were tired of working with this big time publishing house and we were thinking ourselves, can we have open access book with the no cost or little cost so that this could be like a journal, anybody, anytime can publish it. And again, our pioneer, Roy Chen, you know, also came in um, and I spoke with the Ravi Amigan, he's associate deputy provost at University of Delaware. And that is also dream come true. You know, last year uh, we published this volume as well on COVID-19 and higher education global perspective. Um, actually, we ended up with the two open, uh, open access book. So last year we published several books, actually a dozen of them in collaboration. Um, but again, is uh, Jasper or Peggy Ellen said, you know, it took almost three years in making. So it's a time for us to reflect on this. You know, many of us have been already talking on what would be my resources, where should I contact, who would be, who can motivate, you know, what are the journals that can help me at least for now. Um, so we, you know, take about a few minutes here to talk about your tips, your suggestion, and also we can invite Dr. Bhattarai, any other colleagues in the room, um, Dr. Ampa, any, any person here. So. Uh, we can have a more meaningful uh, discussion on how we can help each other if we have a same goal of research and publication. So there was there was a question in the chat that I think relates very well to this that I would uh, I would like to address. Please. And I think I'm going back to it. Uh, oh yeah, this was coming from Dr. Myra around. How do you find people to help with data analysis to ensure that it is done correctly? And one of the things that I, I have used personally is bringing on a collaborator onto my project that has that expertise, right? So I have an expertise in quantitative research, but not qualitative. And I always tell people that I can, I am very happy and excited to, to interview people and to talk to people and to get all of that data. <laughs> but then once the data shows up, it's like, wait, can I just put this in Stata and let magic happen? <laughs> and it doesn't I work. I can relate. <laughs> and so I, I, I always, whenever I have anything that has to do with the qualitative study, like to bring on an experienced person who has that expertise as a collaborator. And, 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 it, and I love, I've always used that. I've, I've told people that people, some people, uh, uh, I've, I've had pushed back on this. I actually had pushed back on this during my tenure of why haven't you published something by yourself? I, I don't think i don't believe in that 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 is a uh, that is a notion that is not helpful to anybody i believe in bringing collaborators on if it's students are mentoring if it's people that have the different expertise so i have i have never published a single author piece and i refuse to publish a single author piece i could probably do that but i refuse to um, but that that's a great way to expand your network and meet people and and so i always bring on a qualitative expert expert who has helped me build up my qualitative expertise and I have been brought on as a quantitative expertise ex expert on other projects. So it's a great way to learn, to see what your collaborator is doing and you're not, you're not just giving all your data, hey, give me the results, but you're working together because you're learning and you're making sure this is done appropriately. And so that, that would be my encouragement to all. Thank you, Dr. Ampo. Any other colleagues want to chime in or share? I would like to add something. Um, Dr. Allen provided a list of student-run journals, and that's really where I got my start was Chris Glass was my advisor, and he just handed me this journal and said, you're in charge of it. And I had no idea what I was doing, but um, it was a great place to learn. So if if you have access to get engaged with a student-run journal, 
it's kind of a safe place to learn about the publication process, about the peer review process. And I've learned so much by reviewing other people's work and providing you know, deep feedback to them that that helped to strengthen my writing. So that's one thing that I recommend everybody do if you have access to a student run journal is get involved in that. It's a ton of work, but you learn a lot from the process. Yes, that's a good advice. When talking about the ton of the work, I used to spend at least 20 hours per week. It's like somebody's full-time job, I would say, when I started the Journal of International Student, it's a graduate student. And I'm so grateful with my, you know, to my mentors, uh, Dr. Mandy Sala is right here and, and other, you know, professor from Arkansas, um, you know, and, and you can get the, it, it's well paid if you look at, you know, after 10 years, immediately, yes, you may be cranky, you know, you may be thinking, what am I doing? But you have to wait at least 10 years, the way I see it, maybe you, you have to wait just a few years. Um, Dr. Beller, yes, I see your digital hand raised. Yes, that's also the best way to know uh, us. Yes, please chime in. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. So Welcome. good evening, everyone. My name is Rhonda Baylor, and I represent Morgan State University, Assistant Professor of Urban Educational Leadership. Um, and I have just two things that I want to quickly share that I've learned on this journey. So um, one thing is that when you submit any piece, make sure that there are no errors in terms of the grammar and the syntax. Um, some folks use Grammarly and other tools, but when I submit for a book publication or a manuscript publication, I, I always use a professional editor um, because that helps. And from a reviewer side, because I also review for a journal, if I receive something and it has editorial mistakes or grammar mistakes, I don't care anything about the research. It's just an automatic no for me because we can't publish anything like that. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second piece of advice, something that I am learning as I go is to really develop a thick skin because some feedback from reviewers can be really rude and it can cause you not to wanna resubmit anything. Um, so those are just my two pieces of advice. Thank you. Okay, uh, anybody who wants to chime in? And also I wanna recognize many of our colleagues who are outside the US and joining us. Um, Dr. Vanessa from Manas University, Australia. I see Dr. Gautam, again, representing from 3 v one University um, and other colleagues as well. Dr. Sala, I see your microphone on. Uh, I just want, to, there is a message from uh, Dr. Doreen Mari saying that she wants, she's interested in reviewing and collaboration. Uh, please reach out for any of us. Uh, we are always looking for uh, collaborate, to collaborate on research. And we have always have projects going on in terms of research and collaboration. And we're also in need of reviewers. So any of the journals, if, if you just reach out for any of us or, uh, or Dr. Pesta, um, we'll, we'll redirect you to the link to apply to be a reviewer in any of the journals. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful uh, information. Uh, actually, I, I believe I sent the, uh, some information before the meeting, the reviewer training, and then some of the commitment or expectation, you will get a follow-up email uh, from us, um, if you are you know interested in one of our open journals in education, that's great. Uh, if you like to go any other vendors or commercial publishing you uh, know house journals, um, also we do have a list, and I'm very happy to connect uh, to those places. Um, okay, any other questions we have? We want to hear from you. That's why I invited. Usually I invite two hundred people but I like to keep it small, more meaningful, interactive. Many of my sessions last year were not less than 150 individuals in the room. Any other questions? I know it's quiet. Uh, it's nine o'clock here, a little late for us, um, but we can stay a few more minutes. 
Okay, um, while you are thinking of your question, I wanna draw your attention to some of our housekeeping upcoming items. So this is the bigger question of the day. Uh, continue thinking, asking yourself, you know, what tips I should get from my advisor, mentor or mentee um, that's important and how you help your students as well. So it's a two-way traffic. It's not only you publish, but also helping other published. Um, that's the mantra, uh, you know, in academia. Um, we do have many upcoming professional event. So toward the end of this month, we have another event. It's coming on Rethinking Internationalization. This is the recent book, just, you know, I got the cover image last week. And again, this I'd like to remind you, uh, February is the Black History Month, and I'm focusing on uh, historically Black college and university around the globe. There are many, many minority groups, you know, minority languages, and these are in danger when sometime, you know, the way our discourse is written, they are not well addressed. So that's also focus. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a legacy of at least 100 years here in the US. Uh, we have other event, upcoming event in March. Uh, it's also about research and publication. Then we talk about the space success and access of students. I will have other individual authors besides my network. Um, and also on uh, February, March, April, May, June, these are the sessions for our spring semester here in the US. Um, I look, for, look forward to receiving your comment, suggestion, or the topics for the next semester in the fall so that we would have more meaningful. Also let us know the person that you'd like to see in the room. Um, or the expert that you think uh, in your field. Um, so you will be receiving the uh, registration link. Uh, the same Zoom link will work for all of these sessions that I have scheduled. Um, that's here. And then we go back to the uh, remaining questions that you have for tonight. I know everyone's so quiet. Tired. I know it's a boring stuff, right? It's very tedious. And that's the nature of higher education, particularly the research and publication. You'd like me to play the music to bring back the some questions? Dr. Vista, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Again, I've also posted in the chat. Um, I am a lecturer at Morgan State University. I, um, But my other life is working as a uh, administrative people in higher education. Also, I know Dr. Malvo, I've worked with him at Montgomery College um, with the international students, but um, I am interested as well. Um, one of my expertise is writing um, and editing. Um, and so I, I am pleased, uh, I would love to uh, get my feet wet and most definitely um, whatever you have, I'm interested in it. Um, and so uh, I've been um, contacting Dr. Biston again. I thank you for this opportunity. And I put my email in the chat. I'm Kimberly.McManus at Morgan.edu. So I thank you all. And Dr. Biston, I thank you for this opportunity. Okay, great. Let's take a few questions before we go, um, if you have any. And then I can play some background music if that inspire you. All right, so I'm waiting for a couple of questions. Maybe Dr. Bhattrai, oh, Dr. Yas, Doreen. Yeah, actually, hi, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm learning a lot. Um, so I just wanted to share, Dr. Briska, uh, that I actually uh, reviewed my first journal, uh, the Journal of International uh, Students, uh, my first article, I should say. And I, I learned so much from that experience. And so now it's like, I want to look at more articles because it, it's a little bit selfishness because I'm getting something out of it. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. So good to hear that. Okay. Yes, right. best, uh, I have uh, have a question here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanna I just wanna know the idea of ranking ranking of all these journals. Uh, for yeah. example. 
uh, there are some journals that prefer quantitative studies, some journals prefer qualitative, and the scope of these different journals and the reviewer themselves. These are factors that maybe uh, affect the decision that they're gonna accept this article or not, or how the idea of ranking will, will play out in accepting different journal, uh, journal articles to be published. That's a mega million question here. Um, I have, you know, Ryan here, who is an expert of ranking of university and ranking of journal. Ranking is particularly a scary topic for the global south. They are running after, after impact factor and the ranking in the US, particularly in the social sciences or education or English. Some people don't know what is ranking or impact factors and that's okay because they care on the quality, they care on the, you know, they know the journal in their field. Um, yeah, so journal are ranked based on their citation, how often these art published articles are cited by other people. Um, and the Google Scholar and the Scopus, you know, they have listed these ranking. Um, and I was so fortunate to tell you that, you know, Google rank uh, Journal of International Student on the 10th position out of all, and it, it goes by the discipline. Um, but I asked Ryan to chime in more. I mean, I can add a little bit, just there, there's sort of metrics of, of citation, self citations. You can look on um, what's S C I M A G O, that website that has a, a really good sort of metric that you can look and uh, compare uh, different, you know, if you're looking at that kind of metric. But what, what I'll say is that oftentimes this is tied to uh, which index the journal is cited in. So, for instance, S S C I, Social Science Citation Index which is uh, housed by uh, Clairviate, which is a, another uh, company, for-profit company, but basically because the university rankings use that data uh, for their indicators for you know, various rankings. And so institutions around the world said, all right, well, if you they did incentives to publish, if you publish in those journals in the SSCI, uh, you will give you extra money. This was common in East Asia, certainly in China. Actually, China just stopped doing it. Although, well, they said they stopped doing it. We'll see if they actually stopped doing it. Um, but what that did is that made those journals sort of skyrocket up into uh, admissions rates or some uh, acceptance rates where they're just getting so many people uh, to, to publish in them. And in fact, some of the journals, so we, we can't get through as many submissions as we have. And that's all the ones sort of the elite. Scopus also has some connection to that. Um, the the issue is that that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that those are better than these other publications that aren't listed in there. And there's various reasons why they might not get in. If you look at where they're located, most of the ones are located in the UK. Most of them are, are in the US. They're based in in the old traditional higher education research institutions. We have other places around the world that are creating knowledge. Oftentimes, those are listed in the in the DOAJ directory of open access journals, and that's a really good resource to look for um, open access journals. They do do audits um, to to kind of help uh, clear out some of those predatory journals that Dr. Bissa talked about earlier. Um, so that's a good place to look. Um, but they definitely probably don't have the resources compared to uh, the ones that connect to the big publishers and that are often. Uh, either housed or connected to maybe some of the more elite and famous institutions around the world. Great question and, and response. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other final thoughts or closing remarks? I know we are almost top of the hour and I appreciate all of you for listening at least 70 minutes or staying with us 70 minutes. I'd like to hear one voice as a closing remarks for tonight or maybe this morning in other countries. Okay, Vinesh, do you wanna say anything? Unmute, yes. I see your hand hi, raised. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, hi, hi, Dr. Bista. I just wanted to say hello from Monash University, Australia. I just wanna say what a great um, initiative, uh, very new in the space. We're just, we just had our proposal um, for our book approved by yourself and, and, and Dr. Glass. And we're looking forward to putting that together. But I just want to uh, really acknowledge um, the sense of, you know, feeling like you're coming home where you have a network of people that you can now talk to. I've already connected with Jasveer and with Ryan um, and, and 
with, with two uh, professors who are leading the journal. So it's just fantastic. Thank you for this initiative. Thank you. And as Dr. Ampa said earlier, collaboration, teamwork is probably the best, you know, we are not expert on expert in everything. You know, you may be expert in writing some up, somebody may be expert in data analysis or interviews. When you do the teamwork, probably you produce best of the best out of the you know, work or the research. Um, so that's what I believe the power of networking. And I'm so fortunate, grateful to all of my colleagues and friends, mentors here in the room. If you were not here, I would not be here in any of my research. So I thank you, everyone, each of you for your time, commitment, your privilege of time here. Um, we'll be in touch. You will get a copy of recording as well as uh, the other uh, additional resources about the journal. Thank you and good day, good night. Thank you, Dr. Bista, for a great session. Thank you, everyone. Good night, good day.